All right, Shane, I use Premiere Pro, but now I need to export my video. <laughs> Should I be using VBR? And what the heck is a CBR anyway? This is how we do it. What's up everybody, it is Shane here at Waiting To Be Seen, and I wanna welcome you to today's video. If you have actually wondered what is CBR and VBR, then you are definitely in the right place today. I wanna to just share with you very quickly what the two things are as export options in Premiere Pro and the best way to get, you know, the best quality of video product out of those export settings. I do wanna say quickly though that I'm not talking about any of the importing stuff, yeah? This is just about the export side of things. CBR stands for constant bitrate and VBR stands for variable bitrate. They're two different types of functions in order to export from Premiere Pro. Because we're working with a digital medium, what we're basically asking Premiere Pro to do when we're adjusting the bit rate, whether that's variable or constant, is to determine how much of the, uh, the information, how much of the data we want to keep in the finished product and how much we want Premiere to throw away. And so the higher the bit rate, the more information, consequently, the bigger the file and vice versa. If you lower the bit rate, then it's gonna be a lower file. Before I drill down into the nitty gritty of the CBR VBR question, there's something that I want you to consider first, and that is how much motion, how much movement do you have in your video? I know it seems like a strange thing to ask, but there's a very good reason for it. In essence, more movement equals more pixels that need to be encoded and compressed by Premiere. And ultimately that is going to equal a bigger file size. So that's something that needs to be taken into consideration. Now it might seem like a stupid thing to say, but it does need saying that a variable bitrate does just that. It varies the bitrate during the export. And the way that it does it is really clever. When there's less motion in a scene, VBR discards more of the data because it's going to, it figures out, all right, I can do that without any real image quality problems. The thing is that when motion takes place, like my hands there, <laughs> Premiere raises the bitrate automatically. So it really gives a nice balance, helping to maximize file quality versus file size, if that makes sense. And we can even get an even better job out of Premiere Pro when we use the two pass version of the variable bit rate. If we just choose to use one pass, basically it's looking and it's processing the way that it ought to, but it's doing it just in the one pass. It's going, ah, oh, there seems to be less motion. There seems to be more motion. And it kind of varies on the fly. The two pass is such a better idea, even though admittedly it adds a little bit more time to the processing. The reason why is because the first pass is just about analysis. It's going through and finding the parts that have less motion and more motion and adjusting the bit rate accordingly. So then when it does the second pass, it already knows what it needs to do and it just has to apply the template that it's worked out in that first pass. It adds a little bit more time, but it's definitely worthwhile because it gives a much better compression. The other thing that's interesting about the variable bit rate is that we can say this is kind of the target that we want you to work towards Premiere, but this is the max maximum that you can push it up to if you need to. So you have both of those sliders in one VBR and two VBR pass options, okay? That is not the case though when it comes to CBR constant bit rate. That's using the same bit rate throughout the entire export, regardless of what's happening in the frame. Doesn't matter if there's lots of motion or no, no motion at all, the bit rate stays the same. And again, a high CBR is going to preserve more data and a lower one's going to reduce data. And so in a nutshell, that is the difference. That's why I said at the very top, you need to consider how much motion you have in your video because VBR is going to help you so, so much if you have a lot of motion, whereas CBR really excels if there's not too much motion in your footage. So you can really just have a play around with those. And of course, it depends on your export settings as well. The higher the bit rate, the better the quality. I remember when I was exporting video for TVS, Television Sydney. We had some broadcast stuff going on that community channel and I had to export at between 50 to 100 megabits a second. YouTube, they only expect for an HD video, they only expect like eight to 10 megabits a second. So it depends on what your finished product is going to be used for. So take that into consideration as well, but have a play around. And so I'm hoping that by the end of this video, by this point right now, I've covered off some of the basics to bit rate as well as when you ought to consider using VBR 
or CBR for your next bit of video content. And if that's been useful, then let me know. Leave a comment down below or do me a solid and click on the like button. If you think that videos such as today's one may be useful for you in the future, then join the notification squad for my new content. Click on the subscribe button down below, click on that notification bell right alongside that and YouTube, they'll do the rest. They will let you know as soon as my latest content drops week to week. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I hope that the week ahead is looking like it's going to be a great one for you. And I hope to see you next Friday for even more content here at Waiting to be Seen. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you around. Bye. That's going to leave a mark. What? <laughs>